What's up everyone, hope you're having a good day. Just got done with my live stream and I'm going to meet up with my friend Brian Bursick, the founder and CEO of Wonder Capital. He just finished up a talk at Solar Summit here in San Diego. So we're gonna go hop in the Model 3 and just see what he's up to and learn all about solar and what's going on. Let's go get it. Well, Brian, good to see you. Good to see you, sir. Welcome to San Diego. Thank you. It's beautiful. Yeah. Welcome to Tez, my Model 3. Oh, First thoughts? It. I am incredibly excited to be getting my Model 3 later this year. Yeah. After sitting in this. When are you going to get it? Do you know? They say late 2018. Okay. Which probably means early 2019. Well, but we'll that's see. okay. We'll see. Yeah, we'll see. The ramp is going up. The ramp is going up. So, so it could be with more early. humans and less robots, apparently. Which I was thankful for because I'm a big fan of humans. I like humans too. I, I'm married to one. Yeah, I've created one. <laughs> yeah, I was well, well, I had a small role in that. Right, we but really have a pretty small role as the guys. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But, but anyways, <laughs> I'm a fan of humans, so that that's all good news. I agree. What are you doing here in San Diego? I'm here for the Solar Summit. And what is that? So it's a group of uh, installers and developers getting together with all the other people that facilitate solar building. So it's things like monitoring with drones, uh, financing those systems, which of right. course we do, system design. So it's really getting together the people on the ground doing the work mm -hmm. with all the people building tools or services for them. So there's somebody whose job is to fly drones for solar projects. Correct. I was talking to that gentleman earlier today. How do I get that job? <laughs> it seems like a really good job, doesn't <laughs> it? Does it does seem cool. There are only so many of those because they're so efficient, right? You right, exactly. You don't really need... No, they do like a monthly scan of what's going on on the roof, make sure everything looks good. They can build up 3D models based yeah. on what they see. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I think there's only one or two in each city. Dang. We need you know, more solar and then we'll need more drones. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. That, that'll work. So you guys, congratulations. You just got a Series B round of financing. Thank you. Tell me about that because I'm not sure everyone understands. They see $112 million. They think, cool, you guys are a billion dollar company now. What's going on? Tell me like right. the real, yeah. like how this is going to work. The real how it's going to work is uh, 100 million of that is actually going to finance solar projects themselves. And so obviously wow. as a lender, um, you know, that's our fuel. Right. And uh, so this is really 12 million to go grow the company itself. Okay. And then 100 million to go accelerate commercial solar. So how much solar can I buy for 100 million dollars? So for 100 million dollars, you probably get 50, probably get 50 megawatts. 50 megawatts. 50 megawatts. And that's like enough for Boulder, Hooch. Colorado? Mm, that's interesting. Yeah, probably at least. Yeah? I, I would say bigger than Boulder. I think that we, or we, uh, SDG&E, the power company here, actually had a big project with Tesla, and I think it was something like five megawatts. Um, and they said that that was only like 100,000 homes for a couple hours. Right. Something like that. Right, <laughs> I, right. I'm like, wow, five megawatts. I'm like, eh. We got three million homes here. That doesn't yeah, yeah. really go that far. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken, 50 megawatts might get about a 500,000 person city. Okay. Um, That's a good size city. 100% renewables. Yeah. Yeah. It's a Boise, I think, if I'm yeah. not mistaken. Yeah. Yeah. So we need a lot more, obviously. But <laughs> we it's, need it's, a whole it, lot more. It's a good start. And okay, so 12 million of that is going to the company Correct. to grow the company. More sales, more offices, uh, ping yeah. pong tables. Lots of ping pong tables. <laughs> We're actually just getting all ping pong tables. <laughs> right. uh, it's Twelve million dollars of ping pong tables Correct. coming up. Correct. And balls and paddles and whatnot. Right. right. Some training. Um, no. So we're gonna grow. It's really about growing the team. Mm -hmm. um, so we're fundamentally a software company, and so a lot of our costs are simply um, some really talented people that we have to bring in. So we have uh, See, 16 robots. Now. We need more robots. We do. Generally, <laughs> I need to get here, and then we can all uh, relax, like yeah. in um, like in Wally. -E. Star Trek, man. It's Star Trek. Eventually, like you just solved poverty, and like, oh, we just hang out now. I don't know. <laughs> That's right. We, we go surf. We just kick it. Yeah. So um, we're taking the team from 16 to about 40. Wow. Uh, in the next 15 to 18 months. And we currently have that whole team in Boulder, Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, we're going to be opening up a Denver office. Cool. Because uh, to get to that size, we really need to tap into that that big community. 
Um, those two places, by the way, folks might not know, they're about 35 minutes apart. So um, Not very far. Not too far. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll still feel like one coherent space. But um, yeah, that's, that's what we're doing 16th with the Capitol. 16th Street? Do you, have a, do you have a location yet? We uh, are looking right around there. Yeah. 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 That's fun. I have, a, I have a friend that has a company there, and, and I've spent some time there. So we talked about Great American Beer Festival. Yes. Yeah, Denver's a great town. It is a great the, the real estate's going crazy though, right? It's been booming. Yeah. yeah. Although for people that are living in the New Yorks, oh, the yeah, yeah, Bay yeah. Areas, even San Diego, right. uh, it still is quite cheap. Right. But yeah, since I moved there four and a half years ago, there are neighborhoods in downtown Denver that have doubled in price. Wow. Wow. Well, it's awesome, man. Congratulations on all that. Thank you so much. So what were you, you know, telling everyone it's uh, what was your talk about here? What were you kind of what wisdom were you sharing with all the installers? <laughs> right. um, well, the first thing was actually just showing them what's going on in commercial solar. So mm -hmm. folks might know that residential solar has really been driving the solar industry. Mm -hmm. And commercial solar um, has some issues, one of which is financing that we're trying to address um, with this new capital. And so part of it was actually just presenting all of the really exciting data we have about how in different states, different installers are actually seeing a lot of growth from commercial mm -hmm. and trying to convince more and more people to invest in sales teams and you know specific resources to make sure that you know our malls and our warehouses are uh, powered by solar as well yeah. as our homes um, and then uh, just talking through some of the things that um, you know we see as critical when we go into the next credit crisis because I think one of the things that um, an industry like ours that most of the projects are financed there aren't a lot of people just paying cash for these things mm -hmm. um, even though they have great payouts um, they could be five or seven years right before you see the payback and so this industry really relies like auto like homes on financing mm -hmm. and um, you know Ray Dalio is a pretty smart guy says that every eight years or so we have one of these short-term credit cycles right and the last one was nine years ago okay and so a lot of it was okay how do you make sure that you're doing things the right way you have steady sources a capital mm -hmm. that when this happens you know the solar Weather industry the yeah the yeah. solar industry comes out the other side the right way yeah that's awesome and it's interesting to hear that the commercial stuff i mean so one of the things that i've noticed here in southern california we actually have a state rebate which for which is for batteries mm -hmm. and 90 percent of it is immediately gobbled up by commercial storage mm-hmm which I, I just always assumed was also tied to commercial solar projects. Right. And I don't know, maybe California is probably progressive in this compared to maybe other places, but it, is. it seems like, to me, I guess I always imagined solar commercially was a giant thing, yeah. but you're saying that the residential has been, been driving it for the past or I don't know, however long. Yeah, about a decade. Wow. Um, so really what's going on there is that on the residential side, everyone is a FICO score. Mm -hmm. And so what Solar City did and the industry copied was this half billion dollar deal with Goldman in 2011 that mm -hmm. really kicked off the party, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And what they did is Goldman said, we're going to pre-approve based on FICO scores what these rates are going to be mm -hmm. such that your salespeople can go to a home with an iPad, put in a few pieces of info, and you've got a financing package ready to go. Wow. Doing that for commercial borrowers is incredibly hard. Got you. Because um, there's so, not like a FICO. You have to like audit their financials and stuff, exactly. right? There's not a credit reporting agency for businesses Yeah. Well, or the, any commercial. Yeah, so right. There's not one for everybody. Right. Um, so big businesses get rated by the Hoovers, the Moody's, the S&Ps of the world, mm -hmm. but that only covers about 10% of U.S. business. Mm -hmm. So the local property owner, the local doctor group that owns their three-story commercial space, no one has done that work for. Right. And so basically, if you're a solar installer, you see homes, you know you can get those done. You see the Apples, the Googles, you know, the UCSDs of the world. Sure. And you understand that they can get financing. Right. But if you see, you know, your local property owners, your local businesses, um, it can be really hard to get those deals done. Mm -hmm. And so those installer partners didn't chase down that de those deals. Right, right. And so that's a lot of what I'm doing here is trying to say, no, you should start going after those now. Because there's, yeah. There's We're here, we got a market. fresh hundred million, we, we need to deploy it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, and it's their revenue, right? I mean, yeah. what you pay for uh, as the borrower is you take that loan and you give it immediately to the person who built the system. Right. Right. And so right. Um, that's a lot of what we're trying to do. That's amazing, man. Yeah, I, I, I can't, like, what you guys do, I think, is so awesome um, because of, of how it enables this. There's definitely is, like, a, a big chunk of people here that, that are underserved, right? Thank and you. and yeah. the more. Now, now, do you think you'll ever be able to get to? I guess not, because you still need that FICO score. Like, I'm trying to think, could we ever get to a point where, yeah, you go to the local bank or, you know, or, you know, the school or whatever, and yeah, you punch some numbers in and boom, here you go. Right. It, could we ever get there, or is that like. A fundamental change in our economy or something that yeah. won't happen. I think that if it's about 
is this a high quality business? Mm -hmm. You're always going to have to look through yeah. the financials. There's too much contextual dynamic where you need to, you know, for example, you might have a big, you know, $500,000 hit that drives you unprofitable for a year. Mm -hmm. And so then you have to look to see, is that have to do with the health of the business or is that a one-off expense that we right. shouldn't expect to see in the future? Right. That's the kind of thing that it's really hard it, to- It's almost like a VC funding something, right? You have yes. to do your diligence about like, hmm, what's going on with this business? That's right. I wouldn't be surprised if there's actually some VC fund out there that has some basic like, you know, probably just an Excel spreadsheet that yeah. they like have an intern punch some basic numbers into and then well, so there's actually outcomes is yeah, you thumbs up, thumbs down. There's a firm called Correlation Ventures mm -hmm. that does this and they have a totally quantified process for investing or not. Mm -hmm. And they're really good people. Mm -hmm. But the interesting thing is they need to know who's leading the round. Mm. So even though they're automating <laughs> it, they're actually relying on how how the the quality of the person who's leading it. Wow. So if Sequoia is going in, you're like, that's hey, exactly it's right. probably going to be a good sign. That's right? precisely right. Wow. Man, that's interesting. So 20... 18 is a big year for you guys. Obviously, yeah. you've already got that. Do you think you'll be able to deploy 100 million this year? Or like, what's the Absolutely. goal? Absolutely. I mean, I don't know how fast these things turn around. Sure, so sure. enlighten me. Like, like if I had 100 million dollars and I wanted to invest with Wonder, yep. um, you know, first off, that would be amazing. But then <laughs> second off, like how quickly could we actually deploy that? Right. Um, so to give folks a sense, we're seeing just raw demand, people asking for loans uh, or asking for debt, mm -hmm. um, about 150 million a month. Wow. And so over the course of the year, even without any growth, a little under 2 billion, about 1.8 billion. Mm -hmm. um, so in the context of that kind of borrower demand, 100 million is something we absolutely should be able to deploy. Mm -hmm. But we need different types of financing packages for different slices of that 1.8 right. billion. Right. And so we're confident we can put this 100 million out within 12 months. Um, mm -hmm. Generally, when you get these kinds of facilities, that's the kinds of windows yeah. that you're looking at. Um, but to go fill out the rest of that 1.8 billion, we'd really need people to be willing to take different types of risk, mm -hmm. uh, different types of properties, let's say. Mm -hmm. Um, but basically kind of slice that up in different ways such that we can service more of the market. And, and, and is this the way yeah. I understand it with you guys, you have different funds. Yes. Is that what, how they're, how they're segmented or how are the funds yeah, segmented? The, the funds right now, um, some of them are simply older funds. So we have some funds that we opened and filled up with 50 projects and closed. Right. And actually what we've been doing is reducing the cost of capital for solar so we can build more solar. Mm -hmm. So some of those funds are slightly higher rates than what we're deploying today, mm -hmm. um, which is a positive movement for commercial solar. And I think people should continue to see that happening. Mm -hmm. So the bad news is that if you would have invested with Wonder a year and a half ago, right, you'd get better returns, rates. Yeah. But the good news is that a year and a half from now, we intend to be even lower than today. Mm -hmm. um, but some of it, yeah, is different dynamics. So um, the big delta between some of the funds is how long you have to hold. Mm -hmm. So if people go to the site, they'll probably see a seven and a half over five year, uh, seven and a half projected yield over mm -hmm. a five year term. Um, we also have some people that want to lock up for 10 years, let's say. Right. So a lot like mortgages, you know, you might have a five year arm, some people right. want a 30 year fixed. And so right. that's really the, the difference today. Um, what we haven't done is we haven't really expanded beyond going after the really the best 10 to 15% mm -hmm. of the businesses that apply mm -hmm. is kind of our approval rate right now. Mm -hmm. And what would be really exciting is for someone to come in and say, hey, these yields are starting to get, these projected yields are starting to get a little low on your, what we call our A grade. Mm -hmm. um, we would really like to take a little more risk. Okay. And so right. you actually saw this in residential, the first blind pool funds were 700 FICO and above only. Mm -hmm. And then as that got more commoditized and competitive, people said, you know what, let's go to 650. Right. Let's go to 600. Right, right. And so we'd right. really like to see that movement mm -hmm. and us, you know, able to do a wider swath of this 1.8 billion of borrowed demand. And is there anything in um, the political climate or anything that, I mean, last time we talked, it was about the tariff. Right. Uh, I don't even know if that tariff is actually in effect. It seems like every other day, it's it's back and forth. Like yeah. we're in a trade war. We're not in a trade war. Yeah. I have no clue. <laughs> but is there anything happening? Like I had heard about a Chinese solar manufacturer buying a U.S. solar manufacturer mm -hmm. recently, mm -hmm. because in order to like now be a U.S. company or something right. like that. So right. it seems like there's a lot going on. Do you see anything kind of in that space that is gonna hurt 
this at all or like like or yeah. are, we, are we fine you know? yeah i think tell I th- me we're fine right because right. i want to <laughs> yeah, be fine no, no, we're fine we're fine <laughs> um yeah and i think this was you know part of the um the coverage that i didn't think was great around this was mm-hmm. that um the coverage all assumed as if the tariff would be implemented and enacted and then um hit businesses in the way designed um whereas we know that every time you you know try to figure out how to you know put additional tariffs on things, the businesses are often a step ahead. Right. Um, yeah. So you know the regulatory jujitsu <laughs> that businesses do is only going to take that headline number and of course reduce it. Yeah. And so if anything, I think we're starting to see some of the clever ways yeah. that businesses are getting around the tariff. Yeah. It's, it sounds. Is, yeah. I've been listening to um, this podcast where they talk about this stuff. Yeah. It's a bit. It's a bit like I'm new. Um, to really digging deep into this space. So a bit of it is, is, is that like outside of, like above my head, I guess, but I'm getting more familiar and yeah, it just seems like no matter what moves the politicians want to make, the businesses will easily find a way. Like it, it yeah. seems like it, it, the net effect is almost, is almost pointless. You know? Yeah, I agree. I think it's a lot of positioning. Yeah. I think it's probably politically motivated, not really economically motivated. Right. But, you know, you look at, um, for example, how does NAFTA impact um, this dynamic? Mm-hmm. And if, in fact, you're going to uh, keep the NAFTA provisions, that means that not only could you have a facility in the U.S., you could have a facility in Mexico. Right. Right. And now suddenly you've got a relatively cheap labor base mm-hmm. right across the border from yep. the U.S. Not far. Not right. far. And Ship so, it over and... right. And so, you know, right now, uh, or last year, I should say, you know, Vietnam and Malaysia and some of these Southeastern countries, uh, Southeastern Asian countries were the biggest importers, mm-hmm. uh, excuse me, exporters of panels. Um, you know, I, I would suspect that, um, you know, some of the carve outs in the tariff are going to shift that, mm-hmm. but that the intended impact will not be felt. Right. Right. Man, amazing. Well, I want to thank you again. Thank you. This it's is so fun. Again. Absolutely. Thanks for coming to San Diego. Thanks for hosting me. Yeah. Next time we need to do some beers or something. Very cool. Get a little some people surfing together. Absolutely. If you're can we down. Get this, can we get this camera out in the... Uh... Mm, I don't know about this camera, <laughs> but I have some cameras. We... Good so, stuff. Uh, thanks for coming, Absolutely. man. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, if you guys don't know, go check out teslanomics.co slash wonder, and you can learn more about Wonder Capital and everything and how you can uh, earn a return. 20%? What is it? Projected 7.5% yeah, annual yield. Somewhere between 75 and, <laughs> and 50. No, 7.5. Um, while helping, as we talked about, small businesses fight climate change. So all good stuff. And um, thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you back here in the next one. Thank you.